the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being with us each and every single week. We welcome you in so many different ways here on the TV show, of course. Perhaps you're tuning in or you do tune in to Double Tap Canada, which is on 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays on AMI-audio. Or if you want to send us an email here, why don't you do that? Feedback at AMI.ca is our email address. Lots of opportunity to send in comments, criticism. What do you like? What do you hate? What do you want us to talk about on future shows? We will be happy to get to those emails uh, each and every single week. And of course, if you want to reach out on social media, it is at Double Tap Canada. And use the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap, so we can get to those a lot quicker. I am Marco Flalo. Alongside me each and every single week is Stephen Scott from Glasgow, Scotland. Stephen, how are you feeling this week? Are you excited to talk about a little confusion here, at least on my part, Braille <laughs> key- Braille keyboards this week, right? It's so funny. Every time we bring this up, you're always like, yeah, <laughs> Braille keyboard. I, I don't understand. What, what well, well, here's the thing. About? Hang on. Sorry to interrupt you, but like this, you know, in my mind, because we've, we've done a lot of shows about the specialist, specialist tech, and there are, you know, Braille keyboards that also have the Braille display on them. Okay. Yep. What would you call that? Is that a Braille keyboard? Is that a, is that a Braille display? What would you call uh, that one? Well, see, now you see, you're opening up a can of worms here, Mark, because that could be a Braille. <laughs> display or if it has its own okay. built-in memory and, and capability then it's a real note taker so you know it gets it gets interesting right um uh, but yeah i mean ultimately this this particular device we're going to talk about today is a braille input keyboard okay and this particular one is designed only for smartphones at the moment okay okay now what makes it work only on smartphones. Well, I guess we'll find out when our guest comes on, but so 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 yeah. that's you know, this is a braille input keyboard. So my imagination takes me to a place and I'm like, okay, this has your traditional, I guess, Perkins style layout, right? So it's eight keys? Well it's okay, so t- taking it back a bit, a lot of people <laughs> well, yeah, but a lot of people don't understand this. And I think it's a it's a great question. I'm glad you asked it because here's the thing. When you think of a keyboard, you think of a QWERTY keyboard outlet outlay, right? So you think about the QWERTY keyboard That's the standard input most people use for computers. Well, for Braille users, there's a secondary option. A lot of Braille users still use QWERTY, but they can also use the Perkins style input keys, which are six keys, uh, but oftentimes on displays, you tend to have eight keys, and I'll explain why in a minute. But the six keys are the six dots that represent the six dots of the cell of the Braille character, right? So um, what you tend to find is that you have this uh, horizontal line of keys uh, which you can type on, and it's great. You know, it allows you to input uh, onto your device in the same way if you connected a Bluetooth keyboard, QWERTY keyboard, to your iPhone or even your iPad. I mean, you've got an iPad keyboard, haven't you? It's the same thing, right? It's exactly the same idea. Uh, but this time it's it's in Braille format. Now, the difference with this device, the Hable One, is the design is a bit different. What they've done is they've actually brought almost like the actual Braille cell to life. So you have the Braille cell, the six dots, in front of you. And I have to say, when I first got my hands on this device, it felt really weird because why would the why would the buttons be in a vertical fashion? But it's because of the way you're meant to use and interact with this device. Instead of actually putting it down on the table so that your fingers uh, will actually just naturally lie on top of the horizontal braille. Well, like a traditional keys. keyboard that you're used exactly. to typing on a desk, yeah, okay. This one you hold on your chest. And you actually type. And of course, when you do that, when you actually put it on your chest, I'm doing, I mean, I don't have the device in my hand, but I'm actually doing this now. Um, I'm visualizing it for you. Um, but yeah, essentially, you're just holding it on your chest and you're just typing on those keys. Now, I said there's eight keys instead of six. Six keys for to create the various letters, but there's also um, a lot of use in the other two keys. And what those are for are for, well, simple things like delete or enter, uh, but they can also be used as functions. So you can hold one down, for example, and use it as a function key to do something. And that could be, for example, navigating to the top of a window on the phone or jumping to the So they're the like bottom. programmable soft keys, basically. Kind of like thing. you could kind yeah. of customize them whatever you want. Okay, interesting. Well, customization is an interesting one. We'll talk about that with our guest. But at the moment, there are standard keys, there are standard approaches. So, for example, you would hold down a function key and press the B uh, to you know, create the, the cell for the letter B, uh, which would be back. You know, simple as that, right? So it's that kind of thing you do. So if you're going back in a, in a, or you want to find the back button, that's how you would do it. So it's that kind of way of working. So you're using a combination of letters, a combination of commands and controls in order to 
uh, activate your phone via eight simple keys held in your chest. Really cool. That is, that's really neat. Now, so when we talk about, you know, the spectrum of these devices, so, you know, we've talked before about magnification devices, for example, that are typically software driven. They run on some kind of Android operating system and, and they use a camera to magnify things. Okay, so that's a category in its own. Then you've got this, you know, input keyboard. Where does that range, you know, in terms of, I'm not, I know we're gonna be talking about the Hable one with our guest when he comes on next, but, but specifically in the kind of the category, I know you've talked about a lot of these different devices being really expensive because they are specialist devices. This sounds like it's just kind of like, you know, Bluetooth connection to a phone and a couple keys. Is it as expensive or is this kind of like the, almost like an entry level way to get into using Braille on your smart device? Well, I mean, I, I would say when you think about these devices, just think of a QWERTY Bluetooth keyboard um, in place of this Braille input keyboard. However, when it comes to price, you might not think that way because you might pay 20 or 30 dollars for a keyboard you might even pay a hundred dollars 200 dollars for a keyboard would you pay 500 dollars for a keyboard mark um because that's kind of what you're paying for this device right but that's actually the low end i mean if they're crystal keys and maybe gold inlays <laughs> not, and maybe no. something that really makes it yeah, attractive if to it me. had all that it'd be brilliant but no it's not that uh, and that's the thing right but then again remember this is a niche product and that's why the cost is more expensive however um, this is actually the low end because you're right. There are these Braille devices that are extremely expensive into the five, seven, eight, even $10,000 mark. Yes, $1,000 mark. So, you know, you're talking a huge amount of money, but what you're getting for that money is the Braille display as well. So you're getting the ability to read the Braille cells as they are, as they are uh, shown to the device, or sent from the device to this Braille display. And in some cases with Braille note takers, you have standalone devices, so these machines can operate on their own. We talked about the Mantis Q40 a while back here on Double Tap TV. Uh, that's a standalone device, as well as a Braille input keyboard, as well as a display for your iPhone and your PC and your Mac. So these devices have very different functions. The purpose, the sole purpose of the one we're talking about today, alongside devices like we've seen before, the Orbit Writer, for example, which does have that horizontal Perkins layout, and has a few more buttons to navigate around your device, but essentially it's the same thing, no display, Braille input keyboard only. Uh, you have this, you have the Hable One, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a quick break. We're gonna bring our guest on after that break. This is Double Tap TV. Again, if you wanna get involved, feedback at ami.ca, our email address on Twitter or social media, it is at Double Tap Canada, and use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. We're gonna bring our guest on from Hable in just a moment. Stick around. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We're back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being with us today and each and every single week. And thank you for reaching out by email. We love hearing from you. Comments, criticisms, complaints about Stephen's hair. We love it. Uh, it is feedback at ami.ca anytime you want. And of course, on social media, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. So don't be afraid to reach out. I am Mark Aflalo, Stephen Scott by my side, and our next guest is standing by, Stephen. Yeah, uh, listen, the fact I've got any hair left is, is impressive enough as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, back off, Mark. Uh, right, look, shall we, uh, <laughs> shall we, shall we introduce our guest? Uh, we've got from the company Hable, the creators of the Hable One Braille Input Keyboard. We've got Freak Van Wellness with us here. Uh, great to have you on Double Tap TV, Freak. Uh, tell us, where did the idea of Hable One come from? Yeah, so um, this is a company with two co-founders. So two people that founded the company. Uh, it's me and my co-founder Ayushman. And Ayushman comes from India. And from a very young age, he lived together with his grandfather. Uh, and at a later stage in his life, his grandfather lost his vision. So really from a personal experience, with working with his grandfather, reading the newspaper, um, doing day-to-day -day jobs, he really found out that all the struggles that also came with this. Uh, and one of the big things was using his phone. So really from that point of view, Ayushman decided, hey, maybe there's something I can do about this, or maybe a sort of thing I can develop. And he came up with some uh, with some ideas uh, that were like, by now what we call them really uh, shitty prototypes, is what we like to call them. Uh, and that kind of developed over time. So uh, from that first initial idea, it developed with 50, 100 prototypes. So we started testing with multiple users. 
and, and that's now came to this final product of uh, of the Hable One. Freak, I guess ideas like this take some yeah. time to get right. For sure, and it, and it was really important because when you when you start off, you only have really one opinion of of yourself and maybe the few people you tested with. But the product only really becomes great when you can work with more people and we have more inputs. So it's really important that it takes a while to to develop something like this. Why did you focus on Perkins style keyboard input rather than the QWERTY, the, the standard a lot of people might say? Was it was it all about keeping it simple? Yeah. So Brill, of course, is something that's being used less and less nowadays. Um, but on the other hand, Brill is also something that really brings a lot to people. So we, we done our research and we, we found out that Brill is really, if you look at uh, people with blindness that are familiar with Brill or that use Brill, the, the employment rate is much higher. Often other uh, statistics really say that Brill brings a lot of great things. But the problem is that Brill is a bit old and, and boring. So we thought, okay, let's see why Brill is, Brill is so good for people, but why not a lot of people tend to use it. And we tried to make Brill a bit more new so we kind of put it in a new coat uh, as we like to say and we really focus on the on the good parts of brill and want to bring it to a wider audience so yeah it is a brill keyboard but actually right now in the netherlands almost half of our users don't actually know brill so they got the hey one really as a easy and simple way to navigate over the phone and in the meantime some of them decided to learn brill and others even just stay uh, sticked with the uh, navigation part but it's really a new way of looking at brill Freak, what's the aim here? Are you aiming at people who are new to Braille or people who have been using Braille for a long time? Yeah, so it's really actually uh, people who are, if you're Braille, familiar with Braille, of course it's a great device because it's really something that's just handy and on the road you can use a lot. But when you're not familiar with Braille, there's a lot of things that are actually super useful. Just making that navigation over your phone a lot simpler instead of using that, that flat screen interface, you now have physical buttons. So we really also aim it at that group. And to be completely honest with you, that's not how we once started. So once we started, we really thought it would be Brill keyboard for Brill users. But we kind of learned over time that this is something that you can learn really fast. So everyone, for example, that comes into our team, into our company, they first have to learn to work with the Hable One, uh, sided or non-sided. And most of them didn't have any Brill knowledge. But in a few hours, you get the complete basics and you can already type. And it just takes a few more days to have a decent speed. Tell us a little bit about the design here, Frick, because when I first heard about this, I learned that the keys were in a vertical fashion, so more like the traditional Braille cell. Um, but most of these devices tend to have their keys in a horizontal fashion. Why did you Why did you go for that? Yes, yeah, so actually, this design it it kind of started as an accident. So um, when we started off building the, the product, it was a keyboard that you would kind of put on the back of your phone. So it would be on the back of an iPhone or Android phone, and it would be there just for typing. So when you imagine it like that, it's understandable why you have to press the keys towards yourself and why you hold it in this weird way. But as we were developing and we were testing it with more users, we've all of them told us, well, it's nice, but I want to control my entire phone. And now my phone is super thick with this uh, with this keyboard on the back. So can you make it a standalone device, which, which I can control and type? So based on that user feedback, we decided, okay, let's make it a standalone device that can control your entire phone. And from there, we sticked with the current design of having to type towards yourself and holding it in the air. And the reason is it makes you much more mobile. So you don't need a stand or a desk when you're using it. You can truly use it wherever you are, standing up, sitting down, it doesn't really matter. Freak, when it comes to a device like this, and we could tell the build quality is really, really good here, how important was it to create a really solid and sturdy structure in a device like this? Yeah, so we uh, we are quite a young team. So we are uh, actually a bunch of people that, uh, after uh, completing master's in university, really started to full-time working on this. Uh, and with our team, we have a lot of knowledge on, on design and we do have a lot of knowledge on working with people with blindness. We have some people with a visual impairment in our team, but we lacked kind of the knowledge on really going from that final prototype stage to a really solid product uh, in the market. So for that, we partnered up with a, with a company called Page. It's a really large company in the Netherlands. Uh, and they helped us with that final stage of making sure, okay, we, you have now have a good product. Let's make it to a great durable product and really focus on the ergonomics, build quality, it lasts for a long time, because it's something people use multiple hours a day. So we really put a lot of focus and effort in that together with our partner to make sure it's, yeah, it's a durable device that you can use for a long time. Uh, and, and that was really the focus with them, yeah. I want to talk about the usage here because, you know, obviously this is designed for smartphones, so iOS, Android. But what about computer users? Can you hook this up to a PC or Mac? Yes, so uh, it's a question we get more often. And currently we support typing on computers. So just for typing, you could use it, but that's very limited. 
So we are working on a navigation on on uh, both Windows and Mac. Uh, we're we're still I, I cannot say which kind of screen readers it work with at this point, but we're, we're developing that, and that's also the great fun actually. So the product that's out there right now supports smartphones, tablets, but we're still working on a lot of act added functions in the future. So we can remotely do software updates and things like uh, working with a PC or uh, fast device switching, all these things will still be built in the future. Okay, Freak, Steven, let, let's take a quick break here because there's so much more to get into with this Hable One Braille keyboard. This is Double Tap TV, stick around. We'll be back with more in just a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. We're back on Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott, and our guest this week is Freak Van Welzis, the co-founder of Hable. Stephen? Yeah, and you know, it's been really interesting hearing from you this week because, you know, I've been listening to you talk about the device and, you know, having a play with it myself, I found that one of the interesting things is it doesn't provide any audio. The audio comes from the host device. There's no display on it either. Is that something that's planning to change? Will you bring an update out in the future as in a hardware update that can make that change or are you focusing on audio only from say the host device in this case? Yeah, so currently we really focus on, on the part of just real input and audio output. We we kind of tested with talking to a lot of people and asked them, okay, so for which situations do you use the, the real output? Um, because indeed, as you said, it would really drive up the costs and especially when we are also focusing on people who are not necessarily that familiar with Braille, reading Braille is, is much more difficult to learn than just typing Braille. Um, so for those reasons, right now we really have to focus on, on the Hey One as it is, so just input and not output in Braille. But I can imagine uh, as, as we grow and in the future that it's something we'll, we'll look into again because it does increase accessibility for, uh, for a select group to also have Braille output. But I, I definitely think it would be a few years down the line uh, before such a product would be out there. Freak, how do you keep the actual device up to date with you know the ever-changing world of the smartphone? Is it just a software update? So actually, the Hable One by the phone is recognized as a regular keyboard. So it's not recognized as a Braille device, but as a keyboard. So it kind of allows us to build our own custom mapping. And we also have our own complete custom software to interact with the phone. So we kind of, as long as we follow uh, standards from, from regular keyboards, we can put in everything based on, we make our own sequences, not to get too technical. But uh, because of that, we have a lot of freedom also how we can build certain things. So we can do our own mapping, we can do our own uh, simple navigation that we like. Um, and we, we do work together in certain groups that we know kind of what updates will be coming from Apple or, or Android. And so we're always up to date. And from our side, we yeah, we need to make sure we, we stay updated. Uh, but it's relatively simple with uh, by us using the regular keyboard inputs. Now that we all love customization, Frig, and you know I do too. Um, are there any ways to customize the inputs of this to perhaps use specific key commands? What are the options? So it's something we could do. Yeah, it's it's not there right now um, because it's really at a at a later stage. But I I, I don't want to paint a picture too much because it's something we would work towards. Uh, but it might take a while. But in the end, yes, people can actually fully customize certain commands. It would be relatively simple. So we're building a Hable app right now from which you can like do a software updates over the app, but also a lot of support material. And in the future, yes, it would be possible to fully customize your own input. So let's say you want to uh, open it, your, mess in, uh, your message app, which is located at the bottom right uh, on a shortcut. You can just build that. So you can let uh, kind of give the input to the Hable one. So by holding just one dot, for you, it would open your message app right away. That's something uh, in the future we can work towards. It's been great having you on Freak here on Double Tap TV. Absolutely loved having you on talking about Hable One. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was really fun. Yeah, it definitely was fun, you know, Stephen. And, you know, have you had time to actually get hands on with the Hable One yourself? Yeah, I mean, it took me a bit of getting used to because of that different design. I love the way that you kind of hold it across your chest. Um, I suggested to the company that, you know, they don't need a table when you've got a Hable because um, you're holding it. They love that design, by the way. So I'm <laughs> expecting royalties soon. But, you know, ultimately, it's a really cool device. I love the portability of it. And that design really lends itself to that because, you know, you don't always have a place to put down a keyboard. And, you know, that's that's going to be, I think it's going to be a really popular design. The cost price is good. Check your local stores for information about that um, because the price, of course, does vary from place to place. But ultimately, it's a good price for a good product. What do you most look forward to when it comes to a new device like this coming out? Is there something that piques your interest in particular or is it just playing with new tech? 
Well, you know what it's like. Whenever you get something new, your first thought is, um, what can I do with it? And then once you know what you can do with it, you say, okay, what else can I do with it? And I guess I'm always looking at new ways, which is why I asked Freak that question about, you know, can you use it with PCs? Because as he said, you know, it's not really possible at the minute to, you know, do anything more than just input text with this device at the moment, but he's hoping that down the line, we'll be able to control our PCs with something like this. Now that would be pretty cool. I imagine it would need a few more keys, but I don't know, they seem to have done pretty well. I can pretty much master my entire phone without picking it up at all, just with a simple device with eight keys on it. So who knows what's possible? Stephen, I gotta ask you a really, a really kind of dumb question. At least I think it's a dumb question in my mind, which is, can't you just do this stuff for free? Like, isn't there ways you can just either do it on your own or some kind of software that you can just do it for no cost? It's not a dumb question at all, Mark. In fact, you know, if you've got an iPhone, you already have the ability to do Braille input directly onto the device using the screen. It's called Braille Screen Input. They couldn't make it any easier. It's in the accessibility settings. Go check it out. If you have an Android phone, you can enable this uh, under Braille Back. That allows you to do exactly the same thing. It's uh, a, a simple way, software driven, of being able to input Braille onto the screen using that Perkin style. And if you're on a PC, download a piece of software called Perky Duck. It's a hilarious name, uh, but it actually is a fantastic piece of software based on Perkins, obviously. Perky Duck, which allows you to use your QWERTY keyboard to input Braille onto a notepad style piece of software. How cool is that? Yeah, I get the feeling after this conversation that there's gonna be some more news from them coming down the line. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys, of course, for being involved in this week's episode. Feedback at AMI.ca, if I uh, keep repeating it. It's because I, I, I feel lonely. I just want to hear from you. And of course, on social media, at Double Tap Canada, use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. On behalf of our guest, Freak from Hable, and of course, Stephen Scott, I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you for being with us each and every single week, and especially this week on Double Tap TV. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Jordan Steves and Mark Aflalo. Voiceover Anna Vicino, Integrated Described Video Specialist Ron Rickford, Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson, Director Production Kara Nye, Director Programming Brian Perdue, VP Content Development and Programming John Melville, President and CEO David Arrington, Copyright 2022 Accessible Media Inc.